Why is there a witch's house in Beverly Hills? Welcome to my channel. Today I'm in Beverly Hills at the Spadina House, also called the Witch's House, also called the Hansel and Gretel House. So what is a Witch's House doing in Beverly Hills anyway? Well, it all started about a hundred years ago. In the early days of silent movies, Irvin Willett owned Willett Studios with his brother. They operated on a shoestring budget, but they needed an administration building. So Irvin called Harry Oliver, his set designer, and said, Harry, we want to build something for nothing that will attract and be attractive. Harry researched bungalows of old English countryside and decided to create this English cottage fantasy house. The house was built in 1921 in Culver City. The inside was administration and the outside was a movie set. It was an instant success with the public. There were traffic jams, car accidents, and people flocked to see it. It was also one of the very first examples of the storybook architecture movement of the 20s and 30s. Here's a poster of three of the movies that Willett Studios produced with the house prominently displayed. And the house was used in the 1923 silent film of Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> Pretty appropriate. Willett Studios, however, wasn't profitable and they went out of business. They had planned to destroy this building, but Ward LaSalle, one of the producers who had worked with the Willets, bought the house and he had it moved from Culver City to this lot in Beverly Hills that he owned. Here are some photos from the 1920s in Beverly Hills. Here's Ward LaSalle leaving the house. This is a postcard of LaSalle's house. So, why is it called the Spadina House and not the LaSalle House? Well, Ward and his wife Lillian rented a portion of this house to a musician named Louis Spadina. In 1938, Lillian divorced Ward and she got the house. A few years later, she married Louis Spadina and voila, the Spadina House. <laughs> They lived here until 1965 when they sold it to Doris Green. When Doris was ready to sell in 1997, she did so discreetly. She would not show the house to anyone unless they were willing to bring a cashier's check for the down payment. That eliminated the looky-loos. Most of the people who wanted to buy the house wanted to demo it. I mean, after all, this is prime Beverly Hills real estate. And to be fair, <laughs> at that point, it didn't just look like a dilapidated house. It really was a dilapidated house. At the same time, realtor Michael J. Lebo was looking for a house in Beverly Hills. He had grown up in the area and he loved this house. So he persuaded the listing agent to let him look at it. And he bought it in 1998 for 1.3 million, essentially the price of the lot. Since then, you can see the care that he's taken with the house. The chimney caps, for example, didn't exist in the original house. And notice how they're deliberately curved at the top to continue that fantasy feel. He's also restored the shutters to the windows. And take a look at the wooden fence and the stone fence posts. A lot of these vines are growing along the fence now. Keep in mind too, it's winter in LA right now. When spring comes, these branches are probably going to bloom into blackberries and raspberries, which is why there's a sign that reads, don't pick the berries, signed, the witch. And look at this gorgeous mailbox. It's got these daffodils and this little turtle at the bottom. The yard is also pretty amazing. The no trespassing signs, they fit the theme of the house, but they also tell you this is private property. Seriously, don't trespass. They've also put blackbirds in the trees, which is such a nice touch. And you hear that cawing? That's not a sound effect. 
Those were the actual birds while I was there at the house. <laughs> He's put in a little pond and you can see the fish swimming and the footbridge that leads over the pond to the front door. If you want to see the inside of the house, and honestly, who doesn't, I have a link to an article from LA Magazine. They got an exclusive look inside and it is every bit as charming as the outside. Everything about this house is so charming. It really creates that Hansel and Gretel witch's house fantasy. It is definitely worth coming to see. So if you're in Beverly Hills, forget about Rodeo Drive. Wait, don't forget about that. It's pretty fabulous too. <laughs> but take some time to come over here and see this one of a kind witch's house. I hope this helps you find your adventure. Thank you for watching.